You, we're live right now. Hold on. I'm waiting for the other platforms to kick on. Okay. We are live on three platforms. I swear I feel like superwoman when I can manifest three platforms at the same time and get to you all on all different in all different ways. So we're going to start off with this. It's my Wednesday live. I'm here to answer questions. So, um, you know, we, a lot of you guys are catching on to how I do this. Um, and you're seeing that we post a couple days ahead before I go live. We put a post out that shows when I'm going to go live and you guys ask your questions there. Uh, it's super helpful so that we can organize questions um, and I can get you guys the information you need. We also have Fast Training Week coming up uh, next week. So I really want to talk about that and what, uh, how you guys can participate in. It's a big one. Um, so yeah, so it's, I, I'm excited. I really want to walk through that. Um, and yeah, like, let me know where you guys are from. Um, I love knowing that we're a worldwide community. And you know what would be really cool today, just so we can all have a little fun? Put in, the, in your comments what the greatest benefit fasting has brought to your life. So it might be like, I'll tell you one of the greatest benefits it's brought me is how much time I feel has freed up. And I used to spend so much time thinking about food, what I was going to make, what, if I went to a seminar, I would like pack my food so that I would be ready in case I got hungry. There was so much energy that went around just the preparation of food, um, that I got all that time back. And so that's been one of the greatest benefits for me. So you guys put in the, put in the notes, what, or in the comments, what one of the greatest benefits fasting has provided you. Um, again, we're a worldwide audience and, um, it's just cool to see all the incredible fasting wins. So if you're just joining now, I am going to go over next week's fast training week. We are going to do, for those of you that want to do this with me, we are going to do a three day water fast. Um, I'm going to explain it. There's videos coming out about it, but it really, I want to explain in as much detail, um, how you can successfully do this. Uh, a lot of you guys are going to be like, no, nah, I'm not a three day wa water fast. So you can kind of you can sort of sit on the sidelines and watch everybody because who, who the people that are participating in it, because it's a pretty cool experience. And those of you that will be joining us on the three day water fast, uh, yeah, you're in for a treat. And I want to make sure that I set you up for success with it. Um, okay. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing, those of you that are wanting to know how to do the metabolic switching approach where you vary your fast and you vary your food, I am doing guiding people through another 15 day experience, teaching you how to become metabolically flexible using the principles of fasting and food. And I teach how to break a fast. It's called the fat burner reset. And we will be doing the next one starts, um, after fast training week. So in two weeks, so if you want information on that, just put fat burner reset in your comments. If you're on Instagram, go to the, go to the link in bio. Okay. And that's, I also have some really cool new hacks on how to uh, avoid hunger when you're fasting. And I'll be showing the group that in this next reset. So I'd love to have the, you on that experience with us. Okay. Let's do this. Um, before I go into the meat of this and I get to your questions, um, I do want to point out that I want you all to know if I could answer every single one of your wins, um, fasting wins, I would, um, but I, I can't humanly get to all of them. That's how cool fasting is and how amazing this community is, is that you guys, um, put all these incredible benefits down. So I can't get to them all, but I read them all on a regular basis across all the platforms. When you guys tell me your stories, I'm telling you, like, I get tears in my eyes. I often read them out to my family. I was with some friends this weekend. And I was like, look at these. Like, this is incredible what these people are doing. So know that I'm here. Know that I'm listening. And I love your stories. So please keep leaving them. There were four stories over the, across all our platforms over the last week that were super touching, and I just want to share them with you. Um, the first is from Southern Mom 03. Uh, she, this is, these are her words. I got, I got to say her words because they're just too good. Um, I remember the first time I heard you say that fat could be saving your life. Okay. 
If you have not heard me say fat can save your life, put it in the notes because I don't want to repeat it, but it is such such a good concept for those of you trying to lose weight. I will, I will, I will repeat the concept if you haven't heard it. So she weighed 220 pounds and she was starting a new health journey and she was beating herself up. Okay. Other thing I want you guys to put in the comments, just so you all know that you're normal and you and it's not like, I mean, the thing about like social media is that sometimes we can just, we start to compare our lives against other people's highlight reels. And we go, oh, well, that person's so good at fasting. They lost all that weight. I can't do that. So when someone like Southern Mom 03 shares with us that she was beating herself up and you all go in and go, yeah, I beat myself up too. It just normalizes these thoughts that we have in our head. So if you've gone to fasting, you didn't get results, you were frustrated with, with the, the health journey you were on, just know that just put it in the comments. Yeah, I beat myself up too. Cause we're going to start to work to shift that mindset. Um, so she was beating herself up. She heard me say that fasting was that fat was saving your life. And, um, she changed her mindset and she's now down 50 pounds. My gosh, like that's, that's freaking incredible. So thank you. Southern mom. I think I read this comment on Instagram. I think she, I, is where I first saw it, but that's amazing. So it shows you how mindset is so important. So if you are coming up against hurdles, keep coming back to my lives. I'm teaching you more mindset, more mindset. I've got a bunch of IGTVs coming out on mindset. So the principles work that I'm teaching you guys, I see it in the science. I see it in what you're doing. I, I, it, it works. So if it's not working for you, a lot of times it can be this in between your ears. We got to work on the mindset. So thank you for sharing that. And then we got JB Kellen, 88, lost 25 pounds since fasting and carb cycling. Okay. Remember, it's not just fasting that heals. It's the in and out. And it's, and if, I don't know if this is a woman or not, my guess is it's a woman. Um, women, if you are fasting and not cycling your food and your fast, it, yeah, it's going to be a little more tough. So she's finding that she lost 25 pounds once she started to do the fast uh, cycling that I teach you guys. Okay, Rachel said that um, she's lost 19 pounds since the end of June. We are in the beginning of September, and she usually fasts 16 to 18 hours a day and have thrown in a couple 36 to 40 hour fasts. Um, if you guys didn't see on YouTube, I put out some new studies on fasting windows for weight loss. They're incredible, so make sure you go and, and see the latest one I put out. What's today? Wednesday, I put out yesterday. And she's at the, Rachel's at the lowest weight she's been. And then when, uh, uh, bailing it, uh, lost 56 pounds so far doing keto and IF, um, any, thank you for your attention to your patients. I just want you guys to win. I, 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 there there's, once I look at like the, the results people get with fasting, looking at the science, I spent some really deep time this morning looking at some new studies that are coming out around women and fasting, um, I become every day more and more clear that fasting is our way out of poor metabolic health right now. And because of the pandemic, it is massively important that we get metabolically healthy. Your metabolic health dramatically impacts your immune system. Whether you got the shot or didn't get the shot, we got to get metabolically healthy. That is like, like, I feel like there's so much mixed messaging out there. We got to get away from the mixed messaging and come back to this personal action place that we can, what can I control? When things are out of control, ask yourself, what can you control? And you can control your metabolic health. Even if you failed a thousand times, you can still control the metabolic health. And that's what I really want you to get, ac get across to you. So when, thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing the impact that my teachings have made. Appreciate it. Okay. Questions. So, um, let's, let's do this. Let me explain the rules of the three day water fast next week. And then I'm going to dive into the questions. And if you have questions, please put them in the comments. If I get time, I'll answer them. Okay, here's the deal with a three-day water fast. If you are a new faster, you are not going to do the three-day water fast. I do not recommend it, but I do recommend that you watch the videos where I'm teaching the three-day water fast. 
So um, so it's okay to sit on the sidelines and watch on this one. But if you have a calling, if you're feeling something like on the inside that says, yeah, I want to do that, or you're an expert faster, like a lot of you guys are on this channel, I want you to know how to do it and how to do it safely. So the three-day water fast became quite popular uh, because of Walter Longo's research. And he found that on the third day of water fasting, that uh, stem cells were, were created, specifically stem cells that repaired the immune system. So it's a pr really profound study. He took people who were going through chemotherapy. And one of the challenges we have through something like chemotherapy is that it destroys your immune system. And what he saw is it rebooted the immune system. Old white blood cell counts went down. So white blood cell count went down and new white blood cell counts went up. And it was like, boom, like instantly we saw that there was this reboot of a more passive, uh, a more, uh, a more uh, sustainable, powerful um, uh, immune system. And all from just a three-day water fast. Now, I've taught you guys how to use this um, to like heal things like uh, musculoskeletal injuries. So I've shared my story of uh, Achilles tendon injury that I had, and I couldn't get anything to work at it or fix it. And then I went into a five-day water fast, and, I, and it was like it went away, and it never, ever came back. That was two years ago. So that's also an option for you if you, if you feel like you have some chronic injuries that are not going away. Now, that's why. Now, I would also tell you, that if you have been doing a 24 hour fast pretty consistently, you're ready to go three days. So those of you that feel like you can get into that 24 hour pretty smoothly, here's, you'll see in the video that comes out on Friday, I'm gonna show you how to go into the three day and how to come out of the three day, but I'll give you a little, a couple days ahead here, I'll give you two days ahead, I'll give you some tips. Start today by let's get your blood sugar stable. So bring down the processed carbohydrates. So the breads, the pastas, the cakes, the cookies, and make sure you're eating the good oils. Those are like the most important things. Like let's start getting your blood sugar very stable right now so that when you go into this longer fast, you are going to be, uh, it's going to feel more natural for your body. The second thing is that if you are going to do the three-day water fast with us, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you up your minerals right now. Now, you can do it any way you want to do it. If you like Element, go take Element. I personally am a huge fan of Element. I've got a big jug of it right now. I put it in my water, drink it every day. Um, if that's not your jam, then up your sea salt. Uh, find some minerals at, at your local um, health food store, but we want to get that mineral content up. So we're going to stabilize your sugar. We're going to get that mineral content up. Now, a lot of questions I get about the three-day water fast is, can I have coffee? I'm going to tell you Dave Asprey's opinion on this when I talk to him on my podcast, and then I'll tell you my opinion. So Dave Asprey feels like you one of the ways you can go about a three-day water fast that you still get all the benefits of fasting is doing bulletproof coffee. Now, those of us who do coffee, what bulletproof is, is it's butter or cream or MCT oil in coffee. Um, so if you are hesitant to do the three-day water fast because you have a, a coffee addiction, um, which I, I probably should say that a little more lovingly, I have a coffee addiction. It's a one cup a day coffee addiction, so I'm there with you. Um, but if you're like, ah, I don't really want to give up coffee, but you want to do the three day water fast, then, um, I would say that you could try Dave's technique where, uh, you're doing, just keep drinking your bulletproof. Um, the way I look at it is I'm not a fan of the cream, doing the cream in your coffee on a three day water fast. Um, I feel like, uh, it, 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 it really has the potential to throw off the benefits that we know. Um, and I would even go one more step and say, if you are wanting stem cells, if you are in a chronic condition, like the condition I had with my foot where I, my Achilles, I couldn't get it to heal. It's best to be as pure around these fasts as possible. 
So if you can avoid coffee, then avoid it. Um, that's going to give you the best stem cell uh, release. So know that that's also, there's like different variations. But if you're like, nope, I want to do a three-day fast and I am not getting off my coffee, you can try Dave's technique, which is, like I said, MCT oil um, and a little bit of butter if you want. I'm not a fan of the cream. So there you go, on a three-day water fast. Okay, so that's what you can drink. Uh, you can drink during your fast the element, put the magnesium or the, the powder in your water. That's fine as well. Um, you can drink mineral water. I'm a big fan of Grolsteiner because Grolsteiner um, has, the, uh, has more minerals in it. So these are all things I'm going to repeat in my video on Friday that will come out on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed to YouTube, go over there and subscribe. You'll get notified when that video comes out. Okay, that's the three-day. Oh, last thing I got to say on the three-day water fast. The most important, God, I should have said this in the beginning. The most important thing about this is that you are safe, okay? So let me just tell you a couple of things. We have done long fasts like this across public platforms. Um, I am not your doctor. I, I don't know your health history. So to date, we've been very, very, very safe. We haven't had anybody have a problem with the longer fasts. Um, and that's because they've been very responsible for their own health. What does that mean? If you're a diabetic, pre-diabetic, if you have a chronic condition, please involve your doctor in this. Let your doctor know what you're doing. Um, if your doctor is like, I don't really understand fasting, send them to my YouTube channel. There's so much research on those videos on, on YouTube. So send him or her to that channel so that they can educate themselves. Just because your doctor says don't do a fast doesn't mean that they're educated on what the fast, it, what fasting does for health. And this is what I'm trying to do is create a platform on my YouTube where doctors can come and they can start to educate themselves. So involve your doctor if you have a chronic condition. Second thing, and, and probably the most important is if you're gonna join us next week for the three day water fast, then you gotta mind your numbers. You gotta watch those numbers. And Friday's video, I'll talk about the numbers. I've got a companion guide that I'll that has the numbers in it. Because just be if you get into a fast, like two days into a fast, and you're like, whoa, I'm dizzy, I'm not doing well. And you look down at that number, and that number is in a danger zone. You have to break the fast. This is on you. This is your, your, you're the one running this. So um, the numbers help you understand where you're at. The last thing I'll say on that, I think I said that a couple of times now, is that um, uh, I had a patient one time that was in a fasting competition, never a good idea to be in a fasting competition with her cousin. And they wanted to see who could go, who could fast the longest, like how many days. And she started getting really dizzy when she was, um, she would go from a seated position to a standing position. She would get dizzy. She felt like she was going to pass out. And she asked me what to do. And I was like, you have to break the fast. There's no, you got to break the fast. There's like, you don't mess around with this stuff. And so then uh, she didn't listen. She kept going. She kept going. She, and I didn't know she was in a competition until after um, long story short, one day she stood up, she got dizzy, she fell over, hit her head on the side of the table, had a concussion, and then we had to repair the concussion. So fasting's not an extreme sport. This is not what we're doing. It's not a competition. So if you're going to do the three day water fast, think of it like it's just this loving experience that you're going to give your body. Um, I have videos for you every day. There's, if you, you know, the thing I love about a longer fast, if you have any problems right now that you are like, just can't get your mind to figure out whenever I start a longer fast, I often will say, okay, here's the problem that I want an, a solution to. And I, I kid you not every single time I will, by the third day, fourth day, the solution appears. So it's a beautiful time for a reflection. It's a beautiful time to understand, uh, get at some spiritual insight. Um, so I love it for that as well. Um, and yeah, we will start on Monday and, uh, I, I'm going to show you how to go into the three day. I'm going to show you how to come out of the three day. I've got videos every day. Friday's video will explain everything on YouTube. It's coming out on YouTube. So know that that's there. Okay. Here are the questions that you guys had for me. So, 
Um, and if you have questions about the three day fast, I can see some of your questions here. I'll try to, I'll try to get to them um, as you guys are putting them in. The more concise they are, the easier it is for me to get to them. Okay, the first question that was submitted from Sunday's post was, what are three the three foods we should be avoiding? Okay, I'm going to do a reel on this. Um, if you guys like the reels or the shorts that I do on, short, on, on YouTube, uh, let me know. Uh, a lot of you like that really specific kind of to the point information. So just if you're watching them and enjoying them, let me know. I, I do all this content for you guys. Um, so I want to make sure it's useful. The three foods came up in one of my videos and they are, everybody should be avoiding these three foods. First, the bad oils. So these are your canola oils, your safflower oils, your cottonseed, your corn, partially hydrogenated oils. These oils are killing the human race right now and they are being poured into our food. So get rid of those oils. The second is the processed carbohydrates. Now let's talk about this for a moment because this one is really powerful. We, when I, I, I teach a version of keto called ketobiotic, and what I love about ketobiotic is ketobiotic, it allows for a little higher carbs, and it's asking you to make a lateral change from the carbs, the man-made carbs of breads, cakes, cookies, pastas, anything that it took a, a factory or a, a person to make. That is a, 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 a harmful carb or a carb you're going to want to keep at minimum. So we want to keep that kind of carb down or make it go away. Ultimately, we should make it go away. Um, and then you want to switch over to nature's carbs. Nature's carbs are fruits and vegetables. They're potatoes of all different kinds. Um, I'll even throw in some of like quinoa, um, some of the beans, some of the rices, and then I give you some macros and ketobiotic, but the most, the second part of the three foods you should avoid is we want to avoid man-made carbs and we got to move into nature's carbs. And then the third thing are the toxin, toxic ingredients. So I, I, I showed this on my stories and in Instagram a couple of weeks ago. I walked into a store where I saw a keto bread from Oral Wheat and I looked at the ingredient list it was horrific. It was just chemical after chemical after inflammatory oil. Just because something says keto doesn't mean that it's great uh, or healthy. Then uh, last week, I was in another store where I saw Slim Fast has some keto bars and keto products. I picked that up. I took a picture of it. I'm going to do a post on it. Don't. Uh, I'll show you guys what, what uh, chemicals are the worst. But it was like 50 chemicals in a keto food. Okay, this is not going to move your health in the right direction. So just because it says keto doesn't mean it's healthy. So we want to avoid the three. We want to avoid the bad oils, the processed carbohydrates, and the toxic ingredients. Done. Just like that's what we need to focus on. So if you guys think nutrition is complicated, it's actually not that complicated. We just avoid those three and we lean into the carbs, carbs and the food that is coming from the earth. That's how we are going to thrive and, and survive as a species. Okay, second question. Sorry, I got to get my, my glasses here. Uh, what do you think of the studies that suggest people who skip breakfast have a shorter longevity? Okay, well, one of my favorite things to do is to unpack studies. So unfortunately, I'd like to see the link. I'd like to see the study. I'd like to look at it. But let me teach you how to think of a study. Okay, so the first, and this is so important, I want you all to remember this because this is a tagline that is getting thrown out right now, and that is, the science is settled. Okay, that makes no sense at all. The science is never settled. The purpose of science is to keep r these hypotheses coming up and proving or disproving them. So when I look at all these hundreds of thousands of studies on fasting, many of them contradict each other. So we never, ever, ever should look at one study and say, this is the holy grail. That should never be a part of our, our consciousness. So I don't know the study that suggests people who skip breakfast have shorter longevity, but I'm going to kind of unpack that thought for a second. But the first is I'd love to see the study and it's one study. So I see, what I see is 
thousands of studies saying the opposite, saying that when we compress our eating window, we elongate our life, we slow down aging, we reverse chronic disease. So one study versus thousands of studies, I'm going to go with the thousands of studies. But whoever put this in there, send me a link, I'll unpack it, or any other uh, research study that you found on fasting that you're like, what, I wonder what Dr. Mindy thinks of this, send it to me. I love looking at them. So I'll unpack that. Now, let's talk about this idea around skipping breakfast. So a lot of us, myself included, as we start to fast, we get stuck in a groove. And I talked about this on an instant Instagram the other day, and a lot of you really resonated with this. And so we fast all day, we eat dinner. We fast all day, we eat dinner. Maybe so I actually have a good friend who loves breakfast. So she eats breakfast and then fasts during the day. So we find our little groove with fasting. Well, it doesn't matter if it's breakfast. It doesn't matter if it's dinner. We need to keep varying our eating window. So if you are new to fasting, let me make this really simple for you. You've been eating all day long. So now what you're going to do is compress your eating window. So we start by pushing breakfast back an hour. Then we push it back a couple hours. And we start to get all the food that we want to eat. We're getting it in a shorter window. Great research out of cell metabolism, study after study after study, showing that anywhere from a, a, like a eight to 10 hour eating window is reversing the damage of the Western diet, the high sugar, high fat damage that is causing metabolic syndrome, that is making us immune compromised, that just by compressing your eating window, that you're able to reverse those changes. Amazing. So your first step is to start compressing the window. Now, once you have a groove with that, the second step is to change the window a little bit. So if the window you compressed, you opened up and you started eating at three o'clock, you had a little snack at three o'clock, and then you closed your eating window down at eight o'clock, let's say. Okay, now maybe could you make your eating window go from 12 o'clock to five o'clock? So look at that eating window and move it around. Sometimes you want to maybe do breakfast and then you'll, and then start to do uh, fast the rest of your day. For me right now, I shared this on uh, Instagram TV on Saturday. I'm loving eating dinner earlier. I actually just now, I just got, we have an organic uh, Mexican restaurant across from my office. I just went and got, um, so a bowl. It's got salmon and quinoa and some sweet potatoes in it. Um, I'm gonna and some green lettuce. I'm gonna eat that here in about an hour or two. It's it. I'll eat it around two o'clock, and then I later in the day uh, when I get home tonight, I might have a little snack, but I won't eat much. I'll make most of my food in the middle of the day. So I'm playing with that eating window. So anyway, I I don't know this study, but I do know we need to compress our eating window and we need to move it around constantly. I know that it makes it, it'd be much easier for me to tell you to do this, don't do that, but we, I want to help you find your rhythm. Okay. The third question, should we first do work on becoming fat adapted or balancing hormones? Ooh. Okay. This is a great question. And let me tell you why. So, and I'm going to repeat it. So if you're just hopping on now, the question is, should we first work on becoming fat adapted or balancing our hormones? There are a lot of hormone experts out there and they will tell you balancing your hormones. I will tell you, get fat adapted and you might be amazed at how your body naturally balances the hormones just effortlessly. So let me, let me give you the why there is a hormonal hierarchy. And at the bottom of this hierarchy sits your sex hormones. What controls sex hormones is insulin. What controls insulin is cortisol. What controls cortisol is oxytocin. So if you go to the bottom of the hierarchy, if you try to balance, raise your testosterone, you have, maybe you're trying to bring your testosterone down because you have PCOS. If you're trying to get your estrogen, uh, the good estrogen levels up because you're, you have maybe you have an infertility problem. If you try to, you're a menopausal woman and you're like, like I want more uh, progesterone. You're trying to build more progesterone. You're going to have to get fat adapted. 
fat adapted means that you are insulin sensitive. So we balance insulin to be able to balance our hormones. So it's a great question. I personally, for years when I was doing one-on-one coaching with patients, this was the first step I did is I got people fat adapted and then we stood back and we were like, okay, what symptoms are left left that we need to work on? And 50% of the time, there were no symptoms left because your body is so intelligent. When you make yourself insulin sensitive again, you're also able to make those cells be able to use hormones that you were already producing. We see this with thyroid a lot where somebody goes on thyroid medication and they don't get, they don't feel any different. It's because those cells were so inflamed. They weren't letting hormones into the cell. You got to fix the cell first. You got to get yourself at, at a cellular level healthy first. Those of you on um, Instagram, I, I just put out an Instagram TV this week, this morning on why fasting repairs cells. So go watch that. But we got to get the cells healthy then and we get the insulin stable. And now you can take the magic mushroom that's going to raise estrogen. Now your HRT is going to work better. Now your, your thyroid medication will work. So it's, we always come back to cellular health first. And insulin is at the root cause of so much suffering for people, this insulin dysregulation. Let's fix that first. Let's get fat adapted first. And then everything else will feel effortless. So, and you guys, I know we have so many community members that are, have used these principles and are getting incredible health. If it's you, just put it in the comments. You, when you share your stories, everybody reads them, not just me. And everybody wins and everybody's inspired. Okay. Uh, fourth question, how long do toxic oils stay in your body? I feel like Monica might have asked this. If Monica's listening, she knows who I'm, I, that, uh, I, what I'm talking about. Well, it's a, there's a debate and it's a long time. So I don't know the exact number, but there is some conversation that the toxic oils stay in your body for years. Mm, I don't know about that. Um, there, you know, one of the things that we know about certain toxins like lead and, and heavy metals is your body has a way of storing them. Um, so like heavy metals get stored in our bones and our tissues and our fat. So the toxic oils will probably be stored in fat, but if you become fat adapted and burn that fat, then you should be able to move them out of, uh, you know, out of your, um, you know, you should be able to regenerate those cells. Okay. So that's my thoughts there. Uh, ooh, this is another good one. Okay. Does candida and SIBO make fasting hard? Okay. So let's talk about those two. I, I, I know candida very well. Uh, candida and I were unfortunately friends for many, many years. Uh, I had chronic fatigue syndrome 30 years ago. And at the root of that was a, a really bad can- uh, case of candida. So and SIBO, I've worked with a ton of people with SIBO. So let's just break these two down. So with candida, the challenge that you have is you've got a fungus that is telling you to crave certain foods. So the best way to get this fungus to go away is to not give it those foods. And fasting obviously provides that. So when you first come to fasting, when you're first learning how to do metabolic flexibility, where you go in and out of food and fast, the number one thing for the person who does, who has candida is get off the refined carbs and the sugars and even the fruits. I would even tell you, just get off the fruits. Um, and that is going to kill that candida and bring it down. Now, fasting is your tool. This was me. I, I'm telling you, fasting is the tool to overcome candida better than supplements. So I'm always trying to give you guys the greatest answer that doesn't require supplements. Sometimes we have to supplement with supplements, but sometimes we can do it with fasting alone. So if you know you have candida, give it some time and eventually that fungus is going to go away and you're going to find that you don't have the candida anymore. You don't have the sugar cravings anymore because you stop feeding it. Now, if you start eating sugar again, you will refeed it. 
Um, I, I was, I often tell this story that I was at a friend's house years ago. She had these beautiful cupcakes that were like, she put in front of me. And I was like, my brain was like, yes, I want to eat those. Yes, yes, yes. And then I stopped for a moment and I had just been really getting to this root cause of my sugar. Um, uh, addiction is not the right word, my sugar cravings. And I was like, yeah, but I'm doing so well with my sugar cravings. Do I, do I want to go back there? Do I want to have to go through the willpower of getting over this craving of sugar? And the, the answer was no, I, I didn't. So I looked at those and I thought, I'll be okay if I don't eat them. Um, because what is better is not being a slave to the cravings of sugar. So know that if you have candida, you're using fasting, the candida goes away, but the minute you put the sugar in, all of a sudden the candida grows again. Now, the longer you fast over time, you know, less and less candida there. With SIBO, I think there's only two ways out of SIBO. SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It is where when you eat uh, something fibrous, you get really bloated. A lot of people tell me that they feel like they're almost pregnant because they're so bloated when they get SIBO. So with SIBO, the challenge that, that you have is what do you eat and what supplements do you take? To date, I haven't seen a supplement that is like, I'm like, this is a tried and true supplement for SIBO, but I have seen 24-hour fasts work incredibly well. So more 24-hour fasts because that's going to the reboot the microbiome. It's going to help to change the terrain in the gut so that this bacteria can't live in your small intestine. So fasting first, and then if you eat meat, I've seen some great results with the carnivore diet for people who have SIBO. So the question was, uh, if you have candida and SIBO, does, does, uh, uh, does, does it make fasting hard? Um, I would say for SIBO, no. In fact, most SIBO patients tell me I feel so much better when I fast. For candida, it will make it hard in the beginning, but ultimately it makes the candida e easier. For both those conditions, fasting is like my go-to solution for both of those conditions. Okay. Why wouldn't we want to eat ketobiotic all the time? Great question. Okay. So women, I don't know if this is a woman or man asking this question, but women, I just want to point out that we are not meant to go keto the week before our period. So you need your insulin to be higher. You need your glucose higher to make progesterone. Postmenopausal women, same thing. We need it to be able to make progesterone. Um, so even though you're not, you don't have a cycle to follow, we need it so that we can make a little bit of progesterone in the postmenopausal years. So for simplicity's sake, postmenopausal women, I want you guys to do uh, one day a week. I want you to step out of the ketobiotic diet. Um, women that have a cycle, make sure the week before you're not going keto, lean into the hormone feasting foods that, that I've taught you. And if you're listening to this and you're like, what is she talking about? We have a whole course on this in my academy. Join my academy and you can, this is a lot of what we talk about. So in customizing it for you. Okay, next question is, I'm eating organic, doing all the different fasts, working on my gut and still not losing weight. Why? Okay, this is a great question. And if you are like this, whoever asked the question, if you're in that place where you're like, I show up to your lives, Dr. Mindy, I'm watching your videos. I'm applying the principles and I'm not losing weight. Um, put it in the, put in the comments. I really, this is why I created my Academy to help those of you that when you aren't able to, like there's a block somewhere that's not letting you get to that next level of health, or you're wanting to understand this diff, the metabolic flexibility a little different. I'm teaching that in my Academy, but let me give you a little nugget here for you. So first, this is called metabolic switching. I can be a I can eat food and thrive. I don't gain weight and I can fast easily, make ketones and I lose weight. And I can move in and out of these two places very smoothly. That is metabolic flexibility. This is the place we should all be. But if somebody's doing all these principles and they're not losing weight, there's something that's blocking this flexibility. And I call them metabolic blockers. So I'm going to go through them right now. First is stress. So if you are living a high stress life, 
there there's just nothing. I mean, I, I can give you the greatest formula for, for uh, losing weight and you will still not be able to do it. When our body is in a chronic state of stress, what ends up happening is it thinks it's running from a tiger. So cortisol goes up, insulin become, you become more insulin resistant and your body becomes a less efficient fat burner because there's no need to burn fat if you're running from a tiger. You're just trying to stay alive. So make sure you're getting your stress under control first. That That is key. This is why I'm just, I, I turned off the news. I don't watch it anymore. It is no good for us right now to get sucked into the uh, the fear of this moment. What we need to do as a human race right now is get metabolically healthy. And when we are sucked into the fear, we become metabolically unhealthy. And we haven't even, that doesn't even address the food that's going in our mouth. So let's make sure you're not stressed. If there's a lot of stress in your life, that might be why you can't switch in. Okay. Second thing is toxins. So everything from heavy metals to plastics, you know, there's an incredible study that was done on plastic water bottles. And they found that the people, people that had more uh, BPA plastics in their body um, were more prone to weight gain. Um, I had a really interesting discussion with Ben Bickman on this, on the Resetter podcast. You can go listen to that. That's on iTunes. Um, and we, I asked this very specific question. I'm like, do plastic water bottles make me fat? Like, I want to know, like, is it that simple? And you can go listen to his answer there. But look at your toxic load. There's something called obesogens. If you haven't heard the term obesogens, go Google it and put in Google, say, what is an obesogen? So an obesogen, or what are obesogens? And they'll list out all the chemicals that are obesogens. But one of, there's a lot of them, BPA plastics, phthalates, which are, we've talked about before, are in your clones, they're in your air fresheners. Um, even, you know, some of the, the chemicals and the off-gassing from your clothes, from your furniture, toxins can make you have, make it difficult to switch in and out of these two states. So I want to start with those two. And then the third little bonus hack I'll teach you is that you might need to use exercise to may be able to facilitate this in and out of these two states. And there's a very specific exercise you should use. Um, we do it in my academy on Saturday as a group together. Um, it's called HIT training. And there's a very specific way you can look up high intensity training um, or join us in the academy and we'll show you how to do it. Um, but that might be the third thing you need. Okay. Last couple of things. Uh, uh, oh, so a couple of people had questions about the fat burner reset. Again, you guys, I do these resets um, so that you can have an experience of going through everything I'm teaching on the public platforms and learn how to customize it for you. The next one is coming up in two weeks. I've got some fun new tricks in there on killing hunger that I can't wait to share with you guys. So if you want to join me for that, um, just put Fat Burner Reset in the comments. Um, my team will send you links. If you're on Instagram, we can't, the comments don't let us do that. Go to my bio and you can, you can see it there. So this person's saying, well, what if it doesn't align with my cycle? This actually brings a bigger picture that I, we all can learn from. And that is that when we do fasting one month out of alignment with our cycle, that's not going to tank your sex hormones, but it's when we do it month after month after month, fasting without honoring the week before our cycle, that we start to see those hormones come down. So if you're worried about your sex hormones, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, um, you want to do our fat burner reset, it lines up with the week before your cycle, I say come in and let me teach you how to customize this for you one month is not going to be the end of the world. And now you have the information and the experience so that you know how to can take your fasting lifestyle to another level. That's what I would say. Um, okay. And then the second one is what if I'm postmenopausal? What if I'm a man? We have some men signing up for the fat burner reset. Yes. This is not a woman only experience. So really it's open to everybody. Um, one of the things that I've learned in my own learning style 
is that you can tell me information and I will grab a part of it. I won't grab all of it. I'll grab parts of it. But then if you help me experience that information, then now I will own it forever. So right now I am telling you the information and so that you can grab it and understand it. When you come into the fat burner reset, what we do is now experience that together along with, I go into more detail on the information there. So my goal at the end of that 15 days is you're like, boom, I know how to do this and I own it. The, the goal right now is not for you to rely on me, not for you to rely on any doctor. The goal right now in this moment in history is for you to be your own doctor, for you to be in charge of your own health. That's what the goal is. Doctor means to teach. I know you guys have, hopefully you've heard that, but yet we don't have doctors that are teaching. So the resets are there so I can, me and my team, we can refine this for you. We can get it nailed. So you own this and now you're in control of your health. That's what the world re needs right now. So join us if it feels right. Um, we, again, just on a mission to help as many people as we can. Okay. With that, I am going to finish up. If you're joining me for the fat burner, put it in the in the comments. I just I like looking at the names and seeing who's I might see you on our Zoom call. Um, if you are joining us me for the three day water fast next week, put it in there. If you're watching this later, let me know. Um, my team and I are watching the comments. Um, we're excited to be on this journey with you. Um, and we want you to take this information and not just be like, oh, that was kind of intriguing. I want you to take this information. I want it to change your life. That's the, why I show up for you every single day. So uh, make sure if you're stuck that you're getting the resources that you need. Last thing, I promise is the last thing. Um, listen, you guys, there is so much going on in the world right now. Doesn't matter what country you are, but I, w I really want you to understand that there's no need for us to feel out of control in this moment because there's only one person that controls your health and that is you. So when we look at immunity, the number one thing we need to get is metabolically healthy. Tomorrow, I'm going to put out an Instagram TV. So if you haven't subscribed to Instagram, go subscribe to my Instagram. And I'm going to explain how we can use metabolic health to improve our immune system, specifically against infections. So I will put that out. If it resonates with you, please send it out into the world. This is not the moment in history to be passive. If you are upset by everything going on, don't turn your anger outwards. Turn your compassion and your vision inwards and start with yourself. And those of you that are learning these tools and you're becoming really proficient at it, which I see so many of you are, teach somebody, invite somebody to this platform so that we can, as a world, get healthy. A million people, I have not lost sight of a million people fasting together. So we're going to do it. It just takes all of us get, getting control over our own health first and then turning around and inspiring others. So that's what I got for you today. And those of you joining me in the fat burner, I'll see you all there and never give up on yourself. You are a miracle. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Hugs. Love you all.